Bonjour everyone and welcome along to round number five of the Veloci Esports Squad Sprint. We've arrived in France. How would you have guessed? It's Le Mans. It's uh, going to be an absolute cracker of a race here today. The home of the 24-hour race in Le Mans, but unfortunately for you guys, we're not going to have a 24-hour squad sprint race. George joins me once again in the commentary box. George, are you looking forward to this one? It's going to be a corker. Fixed setups here, Andy. One-stop mandatory, soft tyres mandatory as well as standard here at squad sprint. And yes, this circuit is certainly a cracker. You are absolutely spot on. Opened up in 1923 here at the Circuit de la Sarthe and uh, 38 corners, 13.626 kilometres, 8.467 miles, should I say, on this tarmac surface. It's going to be absolutely superb. And here is the starting grid for this one, Andy. It sure is a monster of a circuit. It's Thibaut Courtois starting on pole with Louis Delatraz alongside in second. Alex Gillen lines up third with Niren in fourth. Arif lines up fifth with Steve Brown starting sixth. Ben McConnell is seventh and Hayden Gillis is eighth. It's time for Tom Martinez and James Doherty who rounds out the top ten. Here's Simon Weigang for Alfa Romeo. Ben Daly back for McLaren Shadow. James Baldwin alongside him. Andrea Kaposha, Yaroslav Honzik and Eamon Murphy make up Yassi. Bono Huis and Yara Watmir make up this 18-man grid for Mercedes. Let's have a look at the team news then. We've got Ben McConnell jumping in at Veloci in place of Maxine Byman. Ben Daly jumps in ahead of Tobin Lee at McLaren. Speaking of McLaren, they're two-legged. No Emily Jones this week. And James Doherty jumps in for last time out's race winner, Barry Buramand, who made it three winners in four races. George, do you think we could have a fourth winner in five races tonight? It's very, very possible. The margin for error around the circuit of South Andy is very treacherous, that's for sure. I can throw up many question marks and certainly it's going to test these drivers. Certainly not only a stamina test, but also a true racer's ability. Yeah, it's all set. It should be a cracker. And in true Murray Walker fashion, it's go, go, go here at Circuit Le Sarf. It's a great start from Louis Delatras, who moves off the grid ahead of Thibaut Courtois and through. Courtois has been swapped. He's had a terrible start from pole position. We've got Alex Gellin going side by side with Delatras into turn one and going round the outside. And you know what? He's taking the lead away from Delatras. It's all changing all stars. And into the lead goes Alex Gellin. It's Delatras second. Arava, who cut the corner through turns two and three, runs in third. And we've got Steve Brown in fourth as they make their way through this technical part of the track before heading out onto that Mulsanne straight in a few moments time but it is still Gillen leading the way from in second position Louis Delatraz, George. Yeah, I'm not sure quite what happened there, but in the background, Steve Brown losing it there for Quadrant, and that's not ideal, but here comes the Quadrant teammate, that is Aravam in there, Arava making a move on the outside, heading round past Louis Delatraz, and moves his way up in a P2, but they're going to go wheel to wheel as they make their way down towards the first chicane, this being the Forza chicane, still leading the way at this moment, Alex Gillen, as you can now see Arava cutting through on the inside, a superb move indeed, it goes ahead of Louis Delatraz, but certainly the All-Star car is not going to let the Quadrant car go, He's going to have another chance himself this time as they reach the second part of the Mulsanne straight. And indeed, here comes Louis Delatraz, who's going to look down the inside, heading down towards Michelin. Still wheel to wheel, still a fair way to go, but they're parallel right now. Still Araba holding on, but can he hold on for long? He's going to have the inside line heading into the chicane at Michelin. And indeed, he gets it done. And is he going to get the repeat here, Delatraz? They come through on the outset. He goes wide in behind. Here comes a uh, Alfa Romeo car. It's a three way swing here. At the moment here, Andy, and it's certainly going to be a tussle, a true battle. It's absolutely brilliant. A content creator, a real life driver, and an esports man. We've got them all here in the squad sprint, and they're going side by side. And it looks like Simon Vangang, having passed Arif, tries the outside on Louis Delatraz, but he can't get through there. Delatraz De La has that one covered, and look at Arif, he's coming straight back at the esports man. Arif right in the thick of it on this opening lap, battling esports drivers and real life drivers alike. And here comes uh, the world's fastest gamer to get involved as well. Arif uh, against Sim Racing Royal and real life racing royalty here. Unbelievable stuff as we go on board now with Simon Vigang who's trying to pick a path through all these cars battling for position. He's on the outside and he's going to get squeezed out there by Louis Delatraz and he drops down into the clutches of Hayden Gullis who now sweeps around the outside and I think Gullis using that momentum has got through ahead of Simon Vigang. Explosive stuff at the start of this race, George Morgan. 
Yeah, they are currently parallel again. No, Hayden Gullis not out of the woods yet. As they come around this next left hand, there's still Simon Vigang has not left his side. And they go wheel to wheel once again. And here comes the Yassin Khan on the outside. That's Yaroslav Honzik who cooks it through on the inside. Absolutely majestic there from the Yassin car. And Hayden Gullis saves himself a little bit uh, squarely. They're heading out the section, but he moves ahead of Simon Vigang, who is currently at the mercy of another car himself. But Hayden Gullis, superb stuff as well, moves his way up, holds on to that position. But uh, Yaroslav Honzik, take a bow. That was a real creeping maneuver there on the inside, heading in through the last stages of Sector 3. As we now look, that was a quadrant car goes off the track. Is that Arava off the track there, Andy? Oh, and Arava, what have you done? Right in the action from the start, and now he's gone for a spin and dropped down the order. Look at this, we're four wide down the straight, and we've got contact. Unbelievable. Simon Vigang into the back of Yaroslav Honzik, who slows across the track and sends Hades, Aaron Gullis tumbling all the way down the order, spinning like a top on the start finish straight. And Aaron Gullis, who's had such a good start, a man who's not picked up any points so far this season, doesn't look like he's going to pick up any today. He's dropped all the way down to 15th place as we watch his teammate Tom Martinez, the man who's carried Veloci through this championship throughout and probably feels he's unlucky not to have his team in the championship battle in the constructors because it's just been him on his own and he's dragged them to within 20, 30 points at the top. He's done really well and now he's sitting about Simon Vigang down the street. Jan Watmir in behind but here comes Tom Martinez, the man who's impressed throughout probably the surprise package of the entire season. He's on the inside of Simon Vigang and at the end of the first part of the Mulsan Street, he's up and through and into fourth position. Great stuff there from Tom Martinez. But look who's in the background, ready to pounce. We've got Jan Watmir lining up Simon Vigang, and that looks very, very tasty, George. Yeah, I have to say, the uh, Flying Dutchman takes no prisoners, asks no questions, as you can now see him in behind Simon Vigang. Just look at the straight line speed on these cars as they make their way down the Molsan Street. There's Louis Delatraz going slowly in behind as well. He's dropping down the field rapidly. Jan Watmir not able to do uh, anything there to Simon Vigang heading into that chicane. He might get him on the outset. Jan might have been slightly spooked there by Louis Delatraz, but he's okay as they make their way down the stretch. The uh, the Black Arrow, the Mercedes, alongside the Alfa Romeo. Jan Watmir's former team of course if you might remember as he's now making his way down through the next right hand of the Flying Dutchman and Simon Vigang going wheel to wheel Jano Watmir trying to tag back here on Simon Vigang but gets it down smoothly does it there by the Flying Dutchman Jano Watmir doing the business he's up in the P4 and now he's going to let fly at Tom Martinez I can see why you call him the Flying Dutchman, George. He's absolutely flying indeed, and that's a lovely move on Simon Vigang. But hold on a minute. Simon Vigang using that slipstream. He's coming straight back. He's on the outside. But initially, it will be the inside for the following corner, though. Right round the outside will go Vigang here. He's going to be ahead before the breaking zone, I think. Now onto the inside, and Simon Vigang retakes the place. The Alfa Romeo back ahead of the Mercedes man, Jarno Otmier. And Otmier, the F1 Esports world champion, will have to do it all over again. Lap two out of eight here in the squad sprint around the Le Mans circuit and we are witnessing some of the very best action we've seen so far as they go down the straight once again. Otmia tucked up behind the back of Simon Vagang and now pulling alongside in that Mercedes power car and he's through as they sweep into the right hander. Jarno Otmia back up ahead of Simon Vagang. A real ding dong battle between two of the very best in the world of eSports. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, we've seen it many times, certainly in the F1 eSports series, and we're seeing it here at Squad Sprint, which is a pleasure to watch, that's for sure. There's James Baldwin. He's trying to close up on Alex Gillen right now, and uh, certainly his uh, endurance expertise will certainly come in handy at a track like the Circuit de la Sarth as the uh, McLaren there makes its way down the straight now, uh, trying to let fly here at Alex Gillen. The time gap starting to come down slightly. And uh, the McLaren Shadow team are certainly going to want that, that's for sure. Team Championship, of course, here at Squad Sprint. And uh, they're very much going to need all the points possible uh, to add to their array of points that they've picked up in the last few races, of course. Uh, Alex, um, sorry, you'd have James Baldwin. I was going to say Alex Baldwin, the actor there for a sec. But uh, James Baldwin there making his way down towards the next right-hander. And uh, as he does so, uh, makes his way through. And certainly Alex Gillen under a little bit of jeopardy. Uh, four tenths of a second of Delta Gap now and he's starting to cruise down the McLaren Shadow car certainly applying the shadow upon Alex Gillen right now as they make their way down the stretch the all-star car in a little bit of jeopardy this is a battle for the lead of the race as in 
indeed. James Baldwin moves alongside exquisite stuff. A little bit of to in and fro in as they do so. Heading into the first chicane. Up in the fourth of chicane. But they touch. They go off. And James Baldwin goes for a spin. Rejoins the track almost instantly. I can't see um, Alex Gillen there at all. As they rejoin. There he is in the background. But look who comes through. He, they've entered the game. It's Tom Martinez. And the Flying Dutchman, Yana Watmere. With Simon Vigang in behind. Alex Gillen. Absolute scenes there, Andy. It's game on, no doubt about that. And uh, wow, Alex Gillen just tried to hang it on round the outside of James Baldwin. I think he just lost the rear end though, went for a spin, and that was enough to touch James Baldwin into a spin of his own. And uh, thankfully for Baldwin, he had enough of a cushion to rejoin in the lead of this race. But Alex Gillen dropped back into the clutches of the chasing pack as we go on board with Jan Watmia. And speaking of being chased, uh, sorry, on board sorry, with Tom Martinez, Jan Watmia behind him. And uh, this is quite the battle between them. And look at that in the background. We've got Gillen and Van Gang doing battle, but we're sticking here with Tom Martinez in second place, who, of course, has been a feature at the front of the field. You've got to say he has been the surprise package of the season on paper. You'd expect the top esports men to be in this battle. Tom Martinez, no doubt about it, taking nothing away from him. He is no slouch on these racing games, but he's really showing just how good he is. Uh, so far this season in squad sprint and look at this we've got Jan Watmir the F1 Esports World Champion pulling alongside Tom Martinez and as they go into the left hander he will be through and ahead and up into second place so we've got the world's fastest gamer leading from the world F1 Esports Champion and uh, when they clashed in Turkey that meant fireworks didn't it George I wonder if we'll see that again today well, it was a pleasure to commentate, I have to say, Andy, and I hope we get to see some more of it. Uh, you've got to give uh, credit to Tom Martinez, of course. I mean, uh, he's been absolutely exquisite uh, this season, especially after picking up a win in Silverstone earlier on in the series. It was absolutely brilliant to watch as we now watch Alex Gillen making his way down towards the next right-hander. Of course, the All-Star car licking his wounds after losing that lead earlier on. And, of course, uh, it, it all seemed to happen to him. Uh, after that collision there with James Baldwin. James Baldwin, luckily enough, managed to hold on to that P1 spot. Alex Gillen couldn't do just that as he goes for a spin, heading into Sector 2 and Sector 2 into Sector 3, should I say. And that means he's going to forfeit yet another pile of places. He's down into P8, and there's Kaposha there, who we're now looking at the rear wing of that Yas Heat car, who's currently in P6. But it has not been a good day, a very sobering day for Alex Gillen. Absolutely, what a shame for him. That lap just, just just fell apart on this lap. He's coming into the pits now, I believe, but two big spins. The first one, you could almost argue, led to the second one. Maybe cooked the rear tyres, lost a lot of grip from that first spin, and it's uh, you know cost him dear. Maybe he went spinning last week up at the Com as well when he was having a good race. So things not quite going together for the All Stars man, which is a real shame because he started the race oh so well, and in the end, it's going to probably result and very few, if any, points at all. But we're on now, on board now, with Kaposha, Andrea Kaposha, and look at that, that is so, so wide from Andrea Kaposha. Goodness me, I almost had to turn away from the screen there, George. I thought he was heading for a mighty crash with the barrier. But the two Yas Heat cars then, running fifth and sixth, Yaroslav Honzik and Andrea Kaposha, who, of course, made its debut last time out at the Be uh, Belgian race in Spa. A solid performance and it's looking even better for him here running up in sixth position and uh, all these points are crucial, fifth and sixth, they do count towards this team's championship George, which is oh so close, oh so tight isn't it? Yeah, I bet he's uh, carrying his Gillette shaving cream after that close shave with that barrier, that's for sure. It got very, very close, very tight indeed, as they're now making their way down the stretch now. And uh, once again, the two Yas Heat cars together in tandem, P5 and P6. Just imagine what that's going to mean for the championship. And uh, as they make their way through the next chicane again, you can now see uh, Kaposha now starting to via on Honzik who's currently in P5, and uh, Yassi can certainly benefit here from a good lump of points. They've certainly proved to be very consistent. This is probably more their turf as well. Of course, the Yassi team, very prudent when it comes to endurance racing. So if they can apply that same trade here for this squad, squad sprint race, it certainly will lend them uh, certainly their very best heading into the, into the rest of this race, certainly with four laps remaining. Uh, I wouldn't uh, take your eyes off them yet, Andy. They certainly are very prudent on tracks like this. Yeah, I think you make a really good point there, George, I have to say. They're probably the most clued up about tracks like this than anyone out there on track. I, I just feel for Niran Yusufu. I mean, he barely knows the F1 tracks, barely knows the corners. Imagine him trying to know one of these tracks. Look at the length of it. Out of the frying pan <laughs> into the fire, Andy. I think that's... <laughs> exactly. So, uh, 
Uh, F's in chat for uh, Niren, because <laughs> uh, that's going to be a real struggle for him out there. And uh, unsurprisingly, he's down in 15th place at the moment. But hey, he's doing all right, isn't he? Racing games is not really his forte, but uh, he's doing fine, I suppose. He's in the pits at the minute uh, after four laps out of 18. But here we have Kaposha on the attack on Yaroslav Honzik, and he's breezing past down the straight. And by the time they reach the breaking zone, yeah, not well before that, in fact. It's a... Uh, Change of positions between the two Yas yes, heats, and it's just all about teamwork, isn't it? I suppose with the fuel spread we have here and the gaps being so far to the cars up in front at the minute, the best thing for them, George, to do is to just keep dragging each other down the straight and overtaking one another, isn't it? Well, that could well be the strategy that they're applying, of course. Uh, Kaposha and Honzik, I'd imagine. Um, certainly, still no team orders obviously apply. They all want to uh, finish in the best places possible. But uh, if you look at the philosophy around Yas Heat this season, the majority of their finishes, the, the cars have been fairly grouped together uh, throughout the series. If you look at some of the results, certainly the Yas Heat cars, uh, like I said before, have been certainly some of the most consistent. And uh, I think they deserve a lot of credit, of course. Um, Jardier, of course, is very vocal about that. He certainly tries and keep, keeps his car up in the top end, does his utmost. And I've got to say, he does it with a smile on his face as well, which is always a, a very nice thing to see. And there's Alex Gillen, who, of course, I can't imagine having a smile on his face right now because he's had a really turbulent race uh, here, certainly here in lap five of eight. Uh, remember, he was leading this race earlier on, and now he's down out of the top ten, which is certainly not the place you want to be. And with three laps remaining, I'd imagine he's feeling a little sore right now. Yeah, you're right. And uh, it's a real shame for him. And just, just to come back onto that point you were saying there about Yassi, I think that's a, it's such a good point, uh, George. You know, they haven't won a race yet this season, but they're in the championship battle because all three drivers have performed at a reasonable level and picked up those points. You know, we've had wins already this season from McLaren Shadow in the form of James Baldwin. We've had wins this season in the form of Tom Martinez. All the points from Veloci coming, of course, from Tom Martinez as well. And of course, Alfa Romeo getting a win under their belt as well. But it's just keeping Yassi in there. They've not got the ultimate pace of the others, but the three of them together, so strong, and it's all about teamwork. Teamwork is dream work, and it's working really well for them. And, uh, you know, they could be the dark horses at the end of the season to go and win the team's championship. I suppose we'll just have to wait and see. But back to the action, and we've got Alex Gillen here up behind Hayden Gullis. And I said earlier on that... I didn't think he'd be getting any points today with that big spin, but he's running in 10th position at the moment and currently just inside the World Championship points. So can Hayden Gullis get his first point of the season or is Alex Gillen, who's made that pit stop, take that straight away from him by making a move as they go down the Mulsan straight once again? Such a long straight, isn't it? And uh, you just feel like you're on that bit of the track forever and ever, going through the trees and then down into this braking zone. And you can see that Alex Gillen is looking really, really confident behind the wheel and the brakes there, isn't he, George? Yeah, he wants to be. I think, uh, naturally, he's had to gather himself slightly after the uh, couple of spins that he's had already, but uh, he certainly has the straight line speed right now. He's uh, starting to buy up on Hayden Gullis, who's had his own uh, little bit of a, a circus today, that's for sure. He's done all, he's done what he can, and I've uh, got to say, he's recovered. He's in 10th he's in place. Like you say, he's still chasing his first points in the championship. Uh, Alex Gillen in behind as well, so it's going to be a, a, a huge, strong, titanic battle between these two. Of course, Alex Gillen now closing the gap very, very quickly indeed not far behind the front wing or the rear wing should I say of that Veloce car as he now moves alongside him heading around the next right hander and certainly the all-star team are watching on and uh, as we can now see and uh, Alex Gillen getting it done he's up in a P10 and drops Hayden Gullis down to P11 it was almost uh, he didn't even put up a fight did he there uh, I have to say Andy yeah it's difficult down these streets isn't it the, the slipstream is so powerful you just it's almost like you're expecting it it was a matter of time isn't it and through it goes uh, Alex Gillen up and a place as we have James Baldwin in the pits on lap the end of lap 5 the start of lap 6 so he's into the pits we've got another car in the background I think that was maybe Ben Daly coming into the pits in the background as well so several drivers making pit stops an all-star car in the pits as well so let's see we're on board now with uh, Tom Martinez as he makes his pit stop then and makes uh, a change of tyres of course, everyone running from hard tyres and then on to softs later on. That's what all drivers tend to do. Remember, the mandatory tyre is the soft, but everyone tends to start the race on the hard. They believe that's the quickest way to go. Simon Vigang in the pits too. He rejoins the track in fourth. Uh, Tom already back out there and James Baldwin as well. That means that Jarno Otmier has taken up the lead of this Grand Prix and he will probably be in at the end of this lap. Remember, this is the longest circuit on the calendar at over 13 kilometers in length. It really is a monster of a circuit. As we pick up Steve Brown in his second race for Quadrant, 
uh, running pretty well in sixth place, but he's under pressure here from Yaroslav Honzik as they sweep down the hill. And Honzik looking to get that move done in this twisty section because he knows he'll be losing time. You know, you don't want to catch a car that's slower than you in this part of the track. You'd rather catch them down the straight, but it is what it is for uh, Yaroslav Honzik as they make their way now towards that straight. I think we're about to see a move as uh, Brown tries to put up a fight, but Honzik slips into the slipstream down the long back straight, the Mulsanne straight. And any moment now, we're going to see a move in the background. We've got three cars pretty close too, but here comes Honzik. And this, George, should be candy, my baby. Down the inside he goes, into the corner, and he's ahead of Steve Brown and up a place. He is indeed heading into the Forza Chicane in good shape, that's for sure. And uh, Yaroslav Honzik, a very good day for Yas Heat so far. They've got cars in P5 and 6. Pit stops already applied, but Steve Brown might get a slipstream here heading down the second part of the Mulsanne straight does so goes alongside uh, before they reach the Michelin chicane once again they're side by side we've got a three wide battle as well in behind uh, involving Bono Huis who has been quite quiet today as the the quadrant car of Steve Brown now holds on heading into the Michelin retakes that P6 and goes ahead of Yaroslav Honzik in behind as well you've got what looks to be Eamon Murphy another Yas Heat car in the top 10 and uh, has managed to dispatch will certainly hold off the pressure of Bono Huis as we're now seeing once again Yaroslav Honzik trying to tie back on Steve Brown getting the slipstream as they make their way down towards the Molsang corner and he's got the better line and you can see in the background Eamon Murphy trying to do the same as they try and hold on there and indeed Yaroslav Honzik comes out on top and he will go ahead as we can now see Bono Huis getting dispatched now by Eamon Murphy once again the two Yas Heat cars looking strong but they're all running wide now here comes the quadrant car of Steve Brown on the outside once again as they make their way down towards the next right handed kink in behind as well you've got Eamon Murphy and at the mercy of Bono Huiz, but here comes Steve Brown, who is still in P6, trying to battle with Yaroslav Honzik as they come down towards the next right swinging bend. Still they're going wheel to wheel, left hander once again, better line for Steve Brown, gets the job done and holds on to that P6, superb stuff. And uh, he will remain there. That was a, an incredible ding dong battle there, and you can just see the two Yas Heat cars, they're looking very dangerous Andy, watch out for them. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm, I'm very impressed with Steve Brown, they're really strong stuff to come straight back through. He's hanging on in there in that quadrant car without the same pace as the, the Yas Heat guys. I thought it was candy for my baby initially. I thought it was job done, but no, he's been fighting back. But look at Honsik there. Brave as you like, sweeping back through on the inside at the start of the sweeping curves. And look at this from Brown. He's all over the back of him through the SE section, trying everything he can. A little bit of dirty air perhaps. And now that drops him into the clutches of Eamon Murphy. So he's now right in the middle of a Yas Heat sandwich. Absolutely brilliant stuff from Honzik though, right round the outside. He's done it already in this race, and he's done it for the second time now, but Brown still not giving this up as they enter the final part of the lap. Look at Murphy up the inside, trying all he can to get ahead of Brown. Can't quite do it, and now that lets Bono Huis get into the battle. Three wide, down the start, finish straight, onto lap seven, the penultimate lap of the race. The Mercedes eSports man has got ahead of one. Can he get ahead of both cars into the chicane? Not quite, and Steve Brown finally has to yield, and he drops down to ninth place but what a fight Steve Brown put up there and Bono Huis is now up into 8th position and can he now get involved with the three Yas Heat cars who are all lined up together in 5th, 6th and 7th picking up consistent points once again and that is the key to success in this squad sprint, George. Yeah, I think they're proving my point, Andy. They like the Circuit de la Sarthe, and I have to say they're proving it here. P's 5, 6, and 7 for Yas Heat. Bono Huis in the mix too. Uh, but don't forget, we've still got this Molsan straight to deal with. And as you can see in the background, uh, you can see there the Mercedes of Bono Huis with Steve Brown in behind. And Steve Brown's going to get a nice bit of slipstream on Bono Huis, who's trying to break it. Uh, but obviously, that's very, very tricky when you've got a long straight such as this. As they make their way through Forza Chicane, and uh, if anything, Bono Huis is actually closing on Eamon Murphy now. So Eamon Murphy's got to watch out. Uh, it looks like that Yaroslav Honzik's managed to break uh, the gap a little bit more. So he's uh, pretty much in the clear for now. Uh, obviously, it can soon all change given the straight line speed. You can just see there Bono Huis dancing all across the circuit. In behind Steve Brown, looking for a way through, looking for an opening. He might have just earned himself one here as they come through the next chicane. No, Bono Huis hanging on there in P8. Uh, but certainly, I don't think this battle is far from over just yet, even though we've still got a lap or so remaining. There's Jana Watmir, P3, 7 tenths, 8 tenths of a second behind Tom Martinez. And this, once again, could be a tasty battle to watch. It sure could be. Tom Martinez again showing he's no slouch right in the mix there, splitting two of the top drivers in the world of esports. And. Uh, Doing a fine job yet again, but Jarno Otmi hunting him down. Can he do anything 
about stopping Tom Martinez, the bright spark of the season so far. But uh, at the minute, it's not looking likely as it stands. Martinez has got the gap. But, you know, it's for, for Opnier, it's all about just getting within that slipstream range, isn't it? Getting close enough to get a toe. But then at the same time, once he gets ahead, he needs to try and break that toe. But down those long Milsan straights, it, it, it's virtually impossible to stay ahead once you make the move into the first part, isn't it? So, you know, it's going to be a tall order if uh, Otmir can get ahead to stay ahead. But that's even if he can get that far because Martinez is really holding up well. He's maintaining that gap at around a second and making things very, very difficult. Nothing comes to the drivers easy in squad sprint. And once again, Tom Martinez is putting on a fine show. And by the way, folks, look at the speed you can carry through here in these brand new 2022 style cars. You know, there's a lot of talk in real life Formula 1 we're going to lose a lot of downforce, but going back to what we're seeing here, we're barely losing any. Some of the action and some of the speed they can carry is outrageous. Look at Otmir, he's on the ragged edge, pushing as hard as he can. And you know what? I think he's given himself a chance here of getting within range of Tom Martinez. So, George, we could have a final lap showdown. Yeah, i got to say, Andy, going back to that, that was a pleasure to watch. Um, just having that on board from Jano Watmir, the pace going through the final sector was absolutely incredible. You're absolutely spot on. And he has given himself a very good chance of getting P2 here. Tom Martinez at, at the jeopardy. And I say it again, the Flying Dutchman on a charge. He is relentless, I say relentless. And uh, you put him on any track, he'll give you his best. That's for sure, as we're now watching them power down the Molsan straight this time again. And you can see the Flying Dutchman, Jano Watmir, looking to take a chunk out of this Veloce car and he will get the straight line speed and uh, I'd imagine Tom Martinez just clocking on he's going to be patient certainly he knows he's a sitting duck on this occasion as they march their way down towards the Forza Chicane the Flying Dutchman Yada Watmere pulls alongside you see Tom Martinez trying to close some of the gap as they march their way through the Chicane but Yada Watmere gets it done oh so easy Tom Martinez trying to get the switch back he'll have an opportunity on this straight as well to try and recover that P2 position but Watmere now can he break that slipstream that's the question it doesn't look like he's going to try at least for now he knows he'll have another chance to he does try and break it heads down the inside smart move there by Otmir but it might not be enough as Martinez creeps through now into second place comes down into the next chicane at Michelin and that is superb and in fact I think he got it a lot better than what Otmir did even though the Flying Dutchman will surely have another chance heading down towards the Molsan corner Oh, here we go then. This is going to be it then. You feel this is one of the big moments in this uh, race then on this final lap. Here comes Opmir once again. They're chopping and changing down these Mulsanne streets. Has Opmir got the position? He's on the outside, but he's got the overspeed. He's got the track position and he's got just enough speed to carry and just enough racetrack to work with to go round the outside and retake that second place. But we're not done yet. Martinez now pulling back alongside. It's Mercedes versus Veloce here in the squad sprint. We've got the F1 Esports World Champion against Tom Martinez, the content creator, on the final lap of the race, fighting over second position as they drag themselves down through the sweeping right-hander and now breaking into the left. And it's Tom Martinez who still maintains the lead of the race. Or the lead of this battle, I should say, is Baldwin cruising out front. And the F1 Esports World Champion has his work cut out if he wants to get ahead of Tom Martinez, who is putting in some fight here, George. Yeah, but he's so capable in the final sectors. We saw it before, Otmir giving it all, as we're now seeing Jana Watmir, the Flying Dutchman, now moving on alongside now as they make their way down towards the next right. This is for second place here in the race as they make their way around now. The Black Arrow of the Mercedes as they enter this very twisting, winding section gets it done as well as they head around the next left hand. There is still Tom Martinez, also never relentless as they round the next right hander, round the next left. It's going to be Otmir for second place. James Baldwin surely has got this in the bag as well and. And, uh, exquisite as he crosses the line. James Baldwin wins here at Circuit de la South. The battle rages on between Otmir and Martinez. They round the final um, chicanes, the final twisting sectors. Otmir crosses the line into P2 and Martinez down into P3. Vigan crosses into P4. Sensational race, Andy. Hats off to James Baldwin. That was classy stuff. He cruised to that victory and the world's fastest gamer is on top. Well, there is the full results then from the race here in Le Mans. It was James Baldwin winning the Grand Prix in some style and getting the fastest lap. That's three wins now for James Baldwin in the first five races. 26 points for that one. Jano Otmier second with Tom Martinez third and Simon Weigang fourth. 
Andrea Caposha came home in fifth. A great performance from him with Eamon Murphy in sixth. Seventh was Bono Hoyce and eighth was Steve Brown picking up four points. Yanislav Honzik was ninth and Alex Gillen rounds out the top ten. And the bottom half of the results, Hayden Gullis came home 11th once again, agonisingly close to the World Championship points, couldn't quite get there. Thibaut Courtois came home in P12. Benjamin Daly, P13 with Arav in 14th. Nerin probably got lost out there, he was 15th. And then uh, the guys that failed to finish, they were James Doherty, Ben McConnell and Louis De La Trans. Let's have a look now at the driver standings, George. Yep, driver standings uh, showing as they are right now. James Baldwin, P1 at the moment, 90 points after that epic victory uh, head around the Circuit de la South. Tom Martinez in P2 as well, 70 points. He's had a great season. Carrie Veloce, certainly, that's for sure. Eamon Murphy, P3 for, on 56 points. Yada Watmir, P4, 55 points. Barry Burman, who wasn't there today, 47 points in P5. Yaroslav Honzik in P6, 34 points. Bonu Huis on P7, 32 points. Joining him, Simon Weigang also on 32 points. P8, Danny Moreno, P9 on 24 points. you got Nathan Tate there, P10 as well. Uh, the team's championship, Mercedes currently on the top end, 111 points to their name. McLaren Shadow currently just closing in behind. P2, Yas Heat after a great performance there today. Plenty of cars finishing in the points. P3, Alfa Romeo in P4 and 87 points. Veloce Esports, 70 points. P5 and Team Quadrant, P6, 20 points. All-Star Team, P7, rounding them off P on 13 points. Yeah, well, it just shows you, George. I mentioned it in the commentary there, how Yas Heat hadn't won a race and they're right in it. Mercedes are top of the standings. And they haven't won a race either. It just goes to show it's all about that little bit of consistency amongst your drivers. But, of course, it's time for the driver of the day, uh, George. Who are you going to vote for today? Well, I must want to vote for the team of the day, Yas Heat. I, I'm, I'm a, I was a big fan of Yas Heat there today. Um, I'm going to give it to Kaposha, I think. Um, I was very impressed with some of his moves that he made and certainly had to crawl up the grid. Uh, but for me... I, i got to give it to all the Yassi. They gave it their all. Finished. Got some good points today, and it certainly does help towards the championship. You know what? We find ourselves agreeing quite a lot on this, George, and I have to agree again. You know, I was going to go with James Baldwin. It's almost harsh not to give, him, give it to him. He was phenomenal, imperious form, stormed off into the distance. But, yeah, Andrea Kaposha uh, had an OK first race, and he's in an even better second race in that Yassi car. And I'm going to give him my driver of the day call as well. But, of course, folks, we want to hear who your driver of the day is, who are you gunning for for your driver of the day after today's race. Be sure to head over to the Veloce Esports Twitter account to cast your votes. And of course, let us know in the comment section below uh, who you're backing this season. The championship is getting ever closer. We've only got three rounds to go. Be sure to join myself, Ginger Andy and George Morgan next week at the exact same time, 1pm on Thursday. Goodbye.